So hello guys, welcome back. So today we are going to study about sterilization and disinfection. It is one of the important chapter in our university exam because a lot of time a short note or an entire essay is asked on sterilization and disinfection. Okay, so sterilization and disinfection. It is also important in PG exams. Okay, so let us discover what do you mean by sterilization and disinfection. What are the difference between sterilization and disinfection? So generally we take term sterilization are the agents which can kill all the pathogens, okay, including spores, which are very hard to kill because they have many outer coverings, etc. Okay, so kills all pathogens. Not all kill all pathogens. We can generally say there are other microorganisms also which are not pathogenic. Okay, we can that we can say it kills all microbes. Okay, including okay. So this is mean by sterilization, but disinfections it may or may not kill all microbes. Okay. Especially spores. In case of spores, high level disinfections may or may not kill spores. Okay. It can kill only most of microbe organism. May or may not kill spores. Okay. So based on their capacity to kill microorganisms, it is classified as three. That is high level disinfection, intermediate level disinfection, and low level disinfection. So, first one is high level disinfectant, high level disinfectant, intermediate level disinfectant. Then there is our low level disinfection. So, let us study which all the microorganisms these disinfections can kill. So, high level disinfections, as the name indicates, it can kill enveloped viruses, vegetative bacteria, fungi, non enveloped viruses. Also, it can kill mycobacteria, which are very hard to kill. Okay, like spores, not like spores. Uh, after spores, the second hardest kill is the mycobacteria. Okay, so then lastly, high level disinfections may or may not kill spores. Okay, so intermediate level. Disinfections also can kill enveloped virus, vegetative bacteria, fungi, non enveloped viruses. It can either may or may not kill mycobacteria. Okay, but intermediate level disinfections cannot kill spores. Okay, so uh, what are mean by low level disinfections? Low level disinfections can kill enveloped viruses, vegetative bacteria. It may or may not kill fungi. Okay, may or may not kill fungi may or may not kill enveloped viruses it cannot kill mycobacteria and it cannot kill spores so based on this is how we classified high level disinfectants intermediate level disinfectant and low level disinfectants now let us classify what are the sterilization and disinfection techniques okay so it can be classified as physical agents and chemical agents physical in terms we are applying physical like heat temperature moisture etc pressure etc okay chemical methods like we are using chemical agent so let us discuss about what are the different sterilization and disinfection techniques so first comes sterilization so in physical methods sterilization includes our autoclave autoclave which is a moist heat method okay it is a moist heat moist heat method Moist heat method in terms where we are applying heat along with the humid okay so that means steams humid etc will be there so it is a moist heat mechanism autoclave then the second technique in a physical method is our hot air oven then there is our incineration then there is flaming this all techniques comes under dry heat method that means you are applying purely dry heat okay there is no moisture here this dry heat this all are comes under dry heat techniques then the physical method in sterilization includes our uh, filtration filtration is done in particle which are heat labile like our gas and liquids okay then there is radiation Radiation can be ionizing or non-ionizing. 
but you have to remember in non ionizing radiations there is infrared only okay ultraviolet rays are usually comes under intermediate level disinfectants okay but infrared comes under sterilization techniques and then the chemical methods includes our eto sterilization that is ethylene oxide sterilization eto sterilization eto sterilizer is the instrument we use okay sterilizer then there is our plasma sterilization in the instrument in plasma sterilizer we use in plasma sterilizer so these are the methods of physical methods and chemical methods comes under sterilization now let us discuss about disinfections okay so we already know disinfections are of three types that is our first one is high level disinfections high level disinfections then there is intermediate level disinfectants then there is low level disinfectants okay so let us classify what are the physical and chemical agents comes under these disinfection techniques first one is high level disinfectants in high level disinfectants there are no any physical methods okay only chemical methods are present in high level disinfectants so what are the chemical methods it includes aldehyde per acetic acid then there is h2o2 then in intermediate level disinfections we have our physical method like parturization tindalization inspissation and then there is boiling you see this all come under moisture heat technique okay this all come under moisture heat techniques not in dry heat because you already know boiling required warm and humid air also in specification tenderization parturition both requires our humid conditions okay moist condition then the chemical methods in intermediate level includes sorry physical methods one more is there i already told about that non ionizing radiations ultraviolet comes under in intermediate level disinfections okay so non ionizing radiation ionization non ionizing ionize sorry non this non ionizing radiation and not infrared here ultraviolet only infrared come under sterilization okay now what are the chemical method in intermediate level uh, disinfectants so in intermediate level disinfectants chemical methods like alcohol phenol then halogens okay these are all the techniques in chemical methods in intermediate level disinfection now let us discuss about uh, low level disinfections in no low level disinfections there are no any physical methods okay like our high level disinfections there are no any physical method in low level disinfection now let us discuss what are all the chemical agents in low level so there is our quaternary quaternary ammonium component okay quaternary ammonium compound it is also known as qsc quaternary ammonium compound short for then there is chlorohexidine gluconate sorry chlorohexidine gluconate okay chlorohexidine gluconate chg so these are the two techniques of the chemical agents in low level disinfections now we already told there are dry heat mechanism and moist heat mechanism in moist heat there is autoclave parturization tindalization inspissation boiling and in dry heat there is autoclave oven incineration and flaming so what are the mechanism on which these two method occurs so mechanism of our moist heat and dry heat okay our first one is the moist heat then we have to study about dry heat so what is the mechanism of moist heat we known it as in dc okay first one is denaturation denaturation of protein then coagulation okay coagulation of protein so this is the two mechanism by which moist heat work then what is the mechanism of dry heat we call it as de o okay so d comes in denaturation denaturation of protein then e for electrolytic imbalance okay electrolytic imbalance 
then O stands for oxidative damage so generally so we had don't want to study about the mechanism of autoclave pulverization tintalization especially boiling etc we just have to know what is the mechanism of moist sheet and dry heat so we can uh, write it under all these mechanisms all these uh, methods okay so i hope you understand the classification of uh, disinfection and sterilization techniques so we have to detail you study about all these it is a long chapter so let us discuss without wasting any time so first one is the sterilization in sterilization we studied what what are the mechanism we have autoclave then there is a dry heat mechanism that is our hot air oven incineration flaming then there is filtration and radiation then chemical methods like ethylene oxide and our plasma sterilizer so let us discuss first about autoclave okay so this is a this picture here you see this is an autoclave autoclave is like a pressure cooker okay we have to apply pressure heat etc so it is like a pressure cooker this is an example of vertical vertical type okay it is a vertical type of autoclave that means nothing if you see there is will be a vertical cylinder here so let us discuss about what is the temperature we needed here so the temperature we needed here is 121 degrees celsius and we have to apply it for 15 minutes okay and we have to apply at a pressure of 50 pound psi okay i hope you get it 121 degrees celsius 15 minute for 15 psi pressure under 15 psi pressure okay so this is the uh, temperature uh, minute and pressure we have to apply here and this time can be vary it can be 3 to 15 minutes okay according to the temperature we uses okay so if it was 121 degree we have to keep it for 15 minutes and if it is uh, our 3 degree then we have sorry if it was only kept for 3 minutes then we have to uh, kept at a temperature of about 135 degrees celsius okay so we can use a temperature between these scales that is 121 to 135 and according to that we have to adjust our time so i hope you get it okay if it uh, only we kepting about 3 minutes then we have to keep a high temperature that is about 135 degrees celsius now what are the control we uses here so what are all the controls now we let us talk about control so it controls can be physical chemical or biological okay so control are the substance which make sure that this method has been occurred that means the sterilization techniques has been completed so that's why we needed control so what are all the control there will be physical control there will be chemical there will be a biological control also okay in this instrument so what is the physical control we uses here as usual our display of temperature and time okay temperature time and our pressure there will be a pressure gauge and then what is the chemical control we uses here it is our autoclave tape okay autoclave tape then what are the biological control the biological controls include the spores of geobacillus chiaro thermophilus okay because we are keeping in their spores okay because uh, sterilization can kill spores so after sterilization techniques the spores are died means this procedure has been uh, completed accomplished okay so that's how we tell from control okay so the what is the control here spores of geobacillus chiaro thermophilus okay now what are all the materials we uses in autoclave so let us discuss about materials so materials includes all the cultural medias except there is exceptions okay so first one is uh, cultural medias except what our gelatin and the sugar cultural medias okay this gelatin and sugar cultural medias are under tintalization this gelatin and sugar medias are uh, sterilized under tintalization okay then also there is serum and egg serum and egg medias like our lj medias okay launstein nixon medias so uh, serum and eggs are kept under our inspisition inspisation okay so these two uh, uh, these four medias are exception exception in autoclave okay 
so the second materials we use here is surgical instrument except sharp okay sharp surgical instruments are kept under hot air oven except sharp sharp are done under hot air oven then the third instruments we kept here is our plastic and rubber like our catheter gloves okay syringe etc so these are all the materials that we use in autoclave techniques so i hope you understand autoclave now let us dive into the second technique that is our hot air oven so you see hot air oven there will be a oven like machine in oven like machines we keep a temperature and also we what do we will pass hot air air continuously throughout it okay so that's the mechanism of hot air oven so you, here with temperature uses is about 160 degree okay 160 degree and we have to keep the instrument for 2 hours so 160 degree at 2 hours is the temperature and the time we use okay then there is control this control here he also includes physical chemical and biological physical display display of temperature and time okay the chemical we use here is the brownish tube brownies tube okay then there is biological control the biological control we use here is spores of bacillus atrophius or bacillus subtilis okay spores of or bacillus atrophius Now let us discuss about what are all the material which sterilize under hot air oven. So now let us discuss about materials. So the material includes glass materials. Okay, like our uh, flask, uh, test tubes, uh, petri dish, etc. Then the second material is sharp surgical instrument. We already told about in, in this, this about in autoclave technique. Okay, sharp. surgical instrument except all the sharp surgical instrument we use under autoclave sharp we use under hot air oven like our uh, scalpel scissors forceps etc okay then the third is the chemical substances chemical substances like liquid paraffins okay and the glove dust glove dust is the zinc like powder that uses in glove okay our uh, liquid paraffins glove dust so these are all the materials we uses under hot air oven now the next techniques this is a dry heat technique okay the hot air oven is a dry heat technique what a autoclave is a moist heat technique we already discussed about it in above then the next technique we use is incineration incineration you already know incineration is a chamber which burns okay burn to ashes here it burns to ashes we cannot use it we, the substances which we cannot use are burned to ashes in incineration okay here high temperature is required the temperature is about 1000 Degree Celsius to one thousand two hundred degree Celsius. Okay, now what are the substances we use in incineration? All under yellow bag. Okay, what are all the things goes into the yellow bag? We put into the incinerator. Okay, like our uh, tissue, uh, our uh, surgical specimens, uh, tissues. Uh, okay, biochemical waste, biomedical waste. sorry not biochemical biomedical waste okay like our placenta etc then the next technique is biomedical waste 
the next technique is flaming flaming is nothing what we have to do is that we have to flame it in a bunsen firmer uh, and uh, till red hot okay we have to reach till red hot which is usually done in our cultural method okay in cultural method while we do streaks etc we have to intermittently uh, flame the our inoculation loops and wires till red hot is accurate okay to sterilize the inoculation loops and wires we have to heat it till red hot under a burner so that's the flaming the next technique is filtration so filtration is done in the subjects which are heat labile etc like our gases and liquids etc okay so flaming sorry filtration sorry to heat labile particle like our gas and liquid so here the control we use is serentia markensis okay control we use is serentia Markations, okay. Serratia markations is the control we use here. So there are two types of filtration techniques. First one is our depth filters, and the second one is our surface filters. So as like name indicates, depth filters will filter the particles throughout its depth and also from the surface, okay. And surface, uh, surface filtration means only filtration occurs at the surface, like our mask, okay. So surface filtration is the most commonly used in our daily life. So first one is our, especially now during to COVID, okay. First one is our depth filters. You see along the depth and from the surface also substances are absorbed. The air is moving in this way. Then the surface filters only from surface, okay. Surface filters. So let us study a little detail about depth filters and surface filters. Example for depth filters, uh, this is throughout depth surface plus depth here only at surface so what are the examples of depth filters examples include candle filters asbestos filters and uh, cinder glass filters okay these are commonly used in food industries and chemical industries okay food and chemical industry so what are the examples examples includes our candle filters Asbestos filters, cindered glass filters. So these are com commonly used in food and uh, chemical industries. Here we have now important for depth filters, but we have important for surface filters. So surface filters have small pore size. Okay, they have small pore size about 0.2 to micrometer. Small pore size. But 0.22 micrometer. Okay, so what are the examples? Example includes our surgical mask. That we commonly use now. Then there is our HEPA filters. HEPA filters. So HEPA filters means... high efficiency particulate particulate air okay high efficiency particulate air filters that is the HEPA filters so their pore size is about sizes they can filter a substance that is sizes more equal or greater than what 0.3 micrometer so they have about uh, efficiency about 99.97 percentage okay they can remove substance for about 99.97 percentage and they can their pore size is about 0.3 micrometer so they can remove the particle larger or equal to that of the 0.3 micrometer okay 
So HEPA filters usually used in biosafety cabinet and operation theaters. Okay, in OP theaters, biological safety cabinet. Okay, so these are all about HEPA filters. Now the second most important air filter is higher uh, surface filter is ALPA filters. So ALPA filters full form is ultra low particulate air filters. Okay, ultra low particulate air filter okay so alpha filters is more efficient than hepa filters because their process is about to greater than or equal to they can uh, filter the substance which has a size greater than or equal to 0.12 micrometer okay so their size is much more less compared to hepa filters so they have about 99.99 percentage of uh, efficiency okay so alpha filters are more efficient than HEPA filters. So I hope you understand the filtration. Now let us talk about the next technique that is our radiation. Okay. Radiation. The last physical techniques in sterilization. The next two is our chemical that is ethylene oxide and plasma sterilizer now let us talk about sterilization so sterilization can be of two types that first one is ionizing sorry ionizing radiation radiation can be two type ionizing radiations and non ionizing radiation usually non ionizing radiations are commonly used for intermediate level disinfections but infrared for some times we use it for sterilization but it is less common okay usage of infrared but ultraviolet is used as an intermediate level disinfectant now ionization radiation is also known as cold sterilization okay ionizing radiations are also known as cold sterilization ionizing radiations are gamma and the x-rays so they have high penetrating capacity This have low penetrating capacities then it includes x-ray gamma ray okay gamma ray is the most commonly used it includes infrared and ultraviolet so infrared is less common it is less common and uv is not a sterilizer it is a intermediate level disinfectant okay not a sterilizing agent it is intermediate level disinfectants so it is less common non ionizing radiation are less common as a sterilizer then what are the materials here we use it for disposable materials okay disposable materials then cat cut sutures cat cut sutures so cat cut sutures are heat label so that's why we use as uh, what ionizing radiation because it will not destroy it okay those are heat label Then these are the materials used for the non-ionizing radiation. By non-ionizing radiations are for surgical disinfectant. They are usually used for surgical disinfectants. And I have already told ultraviolet is a disinfectant. Okay. For surgical disinfection. Commonly intermediate level disinfection. Okay. Then it is also used in OP theaters bio safety cabinet okay so these are all about the radiations remember the ionizing radiations are also known as cold sterilizations now let us talk about ethylene oxide sterilizer okay so it is one of the most widely used chemical method in sterilization techniques at hospitals okay so ethylene Ethylene, sorry, ethylene oxide sterilizer or ETO sterilizer. Okay, so it is gas, it is a gas sterilizer. Okay, here the agent is gas. 
so how the mechanism work how we do the procedure is we apply ethylene oxide for 4 to 5 hours okay 4 to 5 hours at our normal less than small temperature that is our 37 degree to 43 degrees Celsius okay at 37 degree to 43 Celsius we have to apply it for 4 to 5 hours at 37 degree to 43 degrees Celsius and after after 4 to 5 hours what we have to do that we have to aerate the area for about 10 to 12 hours okay there should be aeration aeration for about 10 to 12 hours so it is very high time consuming procedures okay why we need aerations because why we need aeration is the because ETO are toxic they are carcinogenic and they are highly inflammable so these are the reason why we need to aerate for tries that of the utilization time that we have to aerate for about 10 to 12 hours while we have to only apply for ETO for about 4 to 5 hours okay highly inflammable so I hope you understand the procedures okay so now let us discuss about what are all the materials we can do under ETO sterilizer materials this is the ETO sterilizers okay it is like a chamber where we do uh, pass ETO gas okay so the materials includes heat labile materials because here heat is very much slow okay that means about only 37 to 43 degrees Celsius so done in heat labile materials then we can also do in disposable he, sorry materials uh, heat labile materials like uh, Heatable materials like disposable plastic, say like our plastic, rubber, okay. Then heatable materials like uh, ventilators, hot lung machines, then dental equipment. So these are the some materials which we use ETO sterilizer, okay. So now let us discuss about, oh okay sorry, first we have to discuss about what is the control we used in ETO sterilizer. So the control is Bacillus subtilis or Bacillus atopius or Bacillus golbg, okay. The control we use here is Bacillus subtilis, Bacillus atropius or Bacillus golbg. Okay, so what is the mechanism of ETO? Mechanism of ETO gas, that is ethylene glass gas is it is an alkylating agent. So what they do? Alkylating agents usually destroys our nucleic acid, like etc. Okay, so it destroys act on nucleic acids and protein and destroy nucleic acids and proteins that what alkylating agents do so i hope you understand ETO sterilizer now we are going to the next technique that is our last and final sterilization technique our plasma sterilization okay so in plasma sterilization here the mechanism what we do is that we make a plasma state okay where we create a plasma here we create a plasma so you already know what is the plasma we already studied in chemistry that a plasma is a state gaseous state which consists of ions protons electrons free radicals etc which consists of ions proton electron free radicals okay so plasma sterilization we create a plasma state so the mechanism here is this free radicals now this free radicals is the mechanism here so what they do the free radicals create oxidative damage by using h2o2 okay we apply h2o2 hydrogen peroxide we give the hydrogen peroxide into this machines and what they do they convert h2o2 
by applying of an electromagnetic field okay by there is an electromagnetic field and by this field the h2o2 will converted into oxygen and uh, hydroxyl free radicals okay so these free radicals what they do these free radicals damage our pathogen pathogen not pathogen usually any microorganism or microbes so this is the mechanism by which a plasma sterilization okay first we have to create a plasma state in this plasma state there will be free radicals of hydrogen and a uh, hydroxyl and uh, oxygen ions then these free radicals will damage our microbes okay we have to apply here hydrogen peroxide in order to get free radicals okay so what the temperature we use in plasma sterilizer the temperature we use is about 37 to 43 degrees celsius like that of eto sterilizer okay and we have to apply it for one hour there we have to apply it for four to five hours in eto sterilizer here for one hour then what are all the materials we use in plasma sterilizer? The materials include our heat labile, heat labile materials, okay? Heat labile materials like uh, disposable, already told about like uh, plastics, etc. Disposable materials electrical materials metals which are corrosive okay corrosion susceptible metals which are corrosion because while we apply heat moisture etc there will be chance of highly corrosion okay if these are corrosive susceptible okay because there is warm and it, uh, there is warm and uh, humid so it all satisfy the condition to form corrosion okay so in such materials we use plasma sterilizer technique okay so these are all the materials we use in plasma sterilizer now let us discuss about we already discussed all about the sterilization technique now let us dive into the disinfection so disinfection has high level disinfection intermediate level disinfections and low level disinfection first of all let us talk about high level level disinfection so in high level disinfection the disinfection there is no any physical methods only chemical methods are there okay like our aldehydes parasitic acids and h2o2 so let us talk about first one is our aldehydes so what are all the aldehydes so first one um, the mechanism by which aldehyde disinfects is our it is because of an alkylating agent so there will be alkylation of nucleic acids and proteins okay so what are the examples of uh, aldehydes first one is our formaldehyde formaldehyde 40 percentage okay so how we get a formaldehyde 40 percentage formaldehyde 40 percentage is gotten by by taking formalin 100 percentage and dissolved in KMnO4 okay by oxidation we will get a formaldehyde 40 percentage you see formaldehyde 40 percentage is a gas so it is a gas okay gas disinfection so we use it it is in a fumigation so where we use we use it in operation theaters okay formaldehyde is used in op theaters and it is a used as a fumigation like ethylene oxide we use a uh, formaldehyde as a fumigation because it is gas then the next two aldehydes example is our glutaraldehyde okay glutaraldehyde so glutaraldehyde 2 percentage is taken so glutaraldehyde 2 percentage is also known as cydex okay so cydex so these are generally used in endoscopes the next one example the third example for aldehyde is our ortho aldehyde okay ortho -ophthal. Sorry, here orthophthal only, not orthophthal, orthophthal aldehyde. Orthophthal aldehyde, okay. Generally, we use it 0.5 percentage, okay. So, it is better than Cydex, okay. So, here it is also used in endoscope and it is better than Cydex. Why we say it is better than Cydex? Because it has 
better storage okay it has better storage compared with the side x better storage so it has a long duration compared with our neutral dehyde that is side x then it has better antimicrobacterial activity we already told after spores it is hard to kill anti uh, sorry it is hard to kill mycobacteria okay so uh, ortho orthostaldehyde has a better antimicrobacterial activity mycobacterial activity so this is all about uh, our aldehyde now let us discuss the second agent in a high level disinfection that is our per acetic acid so per acetic acid also used in endoscope dental or surgical instrument okay dental or surgical instruments you see here it is a disadvantage of per, ac per acetic acid what are the disadvantage the disadvantage it include it is very expensive okay also it causes irritations to eye so paracetic acid is not usually used okay irritation to eye so that's all about paracetic acid the third high level disinfectants is RH2O2 hydrogen peroxide so you see hydrogen peroxide is a concentration dependent uh, sterilizer and a disinfection at a high concentration it is used as a sterilizer in plasma sterilizer okay we already told about it at low level concentration it is used as a high level disinfection so let us talk about the mechanism the mechanism is it releases hydroxyl ion free radical okay free radical which causes uh, oxidative damage or causes oxidative damage then what are the concentration dependent usage of uh, hydrogen peroxide at 4 to 5 percentage it is used as a sporicidal agent at 3 percentage it is used as a surface surface disinfectant okay infectant at 3 to 6 percentage it is used to disinfect ventilators and endoscopes etc okay disinfect ventilators and endoscope you see at a high number high, high concentration that is about a 6 to 7.5 percentage it is used in plasma sterilizer as a sterilizing agent okay not as disinfecting agent so used in plasma sterilizer so i hope you understand all about the high level disinfectants now let us dive into the intermediate level disinfectants so in intermediate level disinfectants there are first one is our by uv method okay uv radiation we already told about that in non-ionizing radiation consists of infrared and UV rays. Okay, so infrared is a uh, sterilizer and a UV rays is a intermediate level disinfectant. Usually non-ionizing radiations are only used as UV and it is used as a uh, disinfectant. Okay, not a sterilizer. The second one is our moist heat techniques. Okay, so what are all the moist heat techniques we use as moist heat techniques? We already know these have denaturation, most technique mechanism is denaturation of proteins and nucleic acids and also coagulation, DC, we remembered like that, okay. So what are the moist heat techniques? First one is our uh, parturization, okay. Parturization. So in parturization, there are two methods. Usually parturization is used for food and uh, hospitals, usually in our milk packets, etc. Okay, so pasteurization has two methods. First one is our holders method, where we have to hold our uh, disinfecting a substance in a water bath at a degree of Celsius, about 63 degrees Celsius, for about 30 minutes. Okay, so about 30 minutes will take in order to disinfectant. Thirty minute. See thirty minute at sixty three degrees Celsius. Then the second method is our flash method. In the name itself indicate in holders method we have to hold it for thirty minute. In flash method, it is just a flash. Okay, about uh, only about uh, twenty second. Okay, but uh, when time reduces, temperature increases. So here temperature is seventy two degrees Celsius. So these are the two method. Here it is second, not minute. Okay, focus on that. So 
two methods of pasteurization is holders and flash methods. Now let us talk about the second moist heat technique that is nothing but boiling. Just boiling like our normal regular drinking water. Then the third moist higher method moist heat technique is our tindalization. Tindalization. You see in tindalization we have to keep the object at a 100 degree Celsius for about 20 minutes okay but not in a single day we have to continue this step for about three days okay so that's how we do tindalization under 100 degree celsius about 20 minutes for 20 minutes and continue it for three days so tindalization normally done in cultural medias like sugars and gelatin we already discussed in sterilization technique as exception in autoclave okay so you see for these are used for for sugar and the gelatin gelatin cultural medias then there is our inspiration second third method fourth method is inspiration inspiration so you see inspiration is also like tindalization we have to continue it for three days but the temperature differs okay here 80 to 85 degrees celsius and we have to hold it for about 30 minutes okay per day and we have to continue it for three days so that's what tindalization and uh, sorry inspiration do and inspiration is also used for cultural medias but for like serum and egg based cultural medias for serum and egg based cultural medias our serum example serum like cultural medias we already studied like uh, our what uh, low flesh serum slope low flesh serum slope as an example then egg based our lj media that is lovenstein jensen media lj media so these are the cultural media we use it under inspirations now our we studied about uv radiation we studied about the moist heat techniques now let us study the second agent that is our chemical agent in intermediate level disinfection that is our alcohol okay our alcohol alcohol so alcohol uh, the mechanism is mechanism is by two method okay so what are the mechanism of alcohol it is cell membrane damage they will cause cell membrane damage also there will be denaturation of protein okay denaturation of protein so what are the example example include ethyl alcohol 70 percentage and isopropyl alcohol okay isopropyl alcohol it is also 70 percent usually we do it in the hand sanitizers okay hand sanitizers especially during this time you already know sanitizers okay so the this is the third uh, technique under intermediate level disinfection then the fourth chemical agent is our what phenolic compound okay phenolic compound is also usually alcohols okay phenolic compound so their mechanism is same that is our cell membrane damage and the denaturation of protein so what are the examples example includes our cresol lysol okay so this cresol and lysol are used as a surface disinfectant then there is another example okay chloroxylenol we already know our chloroxylenol it is usually seen in Dettol, okay? So it is used as an antiseptic. We already told that antiseptic is a disinfectant, okay? Antiseptic. So these are all the, these, these are the uh, fifth phenolic compound, okay? Then the next, um, next intermediate level disinfectant is our halogens, okay? So next one is halogens. In intermediate level the chemical agent the next one is halogen so halogen we already know halogens are alkylating agent what they do alkylation of nucleic acids and proteins which destroy them okay nucleic acid and protein so what are the examples the examples include first one is chlorine then iodine okay so in chlorine okay chlorine is act as a surface disinfectant But iodine is a skin disinfectant okay so chlorine is a surface disinfectant iodine is a skin disinfectant so what are the examples of chlorine chlorine can be uh, chlorine disinfectants can be in the two form that is one is the free chlorine one is the 
free chlorine another one is the sodium hypochlorite sodium hypochlorite okay at one percentage so free chlorine is usually done in our water treatment food industries etc okay in food and water industry in water treatment but sodium hypochlorite is the most commonly used in hospitals so you see sodium uh, hypochlorite is used in hospitals like our blood spills our uh, you know our uh, what clothes etc okay clothes laundry okay it is most commonly used in our hospitals that is the most commonly used okay then it is also most commonly used as a lab disinfectant chlorine is a important lab disinfectant so i hope you understand about chlorine now let us dive into iodine that is mainly it is a skin disinfectant okay that is antiseptic now let us talk about the two forms of iodine usually free iodine is unstable okay free iodine is a unstable unstable iodine so how we make stable we either make it stable by adding alcohol or adding poridone okay poridone alcohol or we add poridone when we add alcohol it is known as tincture iodine that is our normal iodine we use as an antiseptic in wounds okay tincture iodine which is a stable iodine when we add poridone it is known as poridone iodine okay poridone iodine also have another name it is called betadine okay beta dine so i hope you understand about the intermediate level disinfectants we have in the in intermediate we have uv radiation and moisture techniques as a physical agent when chemical agent we have alcohol phenolic compounds and halogens now let us discuss about the last one that is our low level disinfectants okay low level disinfectant we have only two compound in low level disinfectant there is no any physical agent so what are the chemical agents chemical agents includes quaternary ammonium compound okay quaternary ammonium compound also known as short form quaternary ammonium compound so what is the mechanism here the mechanism is inactivation of protein and denaturation okay denaturation and inactivation of proteins and nucleic acids is the mechanisms so it is usually used in floor washing okay floor walls to clean hospital walls etc so example include example for the quaternary ammonium compound is our benzene ammonium chloride so this is the quaternary ammonium compound then the second quaternary ammonium compound is our chlorhexidine gluconate okay it is our chlor chlorhexidine gluconate chg so you see here the mechanism involves here the mechanism is disruption of cell membrane okay so cell membrane damage so chlorhexidine gluconate is usually used as a antiseptic okay it is a antiseptic type of type of disinfectant used as antiseptic so these are all about the uh, sterilization and disinfections now we have classified medical utensils okay medical devices are classified by spalding so we called it as Spalding's classification. Sterilization and disinfection is over. Now we are talking about the classification of medical device. So Spalding classification of medical device. He classified medical device into three. Okay. Medical device. First one is the critical device. Then is the semi-critical. Then there is non-critical 
device. So how we classify the critical device? So critical devices are the those substances, those devices which contact with the sterile site. Okay, this critical devices contact with the sterile site. Like our surgical instrument. Okay, with that we use it in surgery and endoscope devices, etc. Examples include surgical instrument, syringe, endoscope. Okay, so for this, because they touch with the sterile site, we needed what? We needed sterilization for this to uh, disinfect, to clean, okay? Sterilization is used in order to clean these medical devices. The second classification is semi-critical devices. So he classified semi-critical are the medical devices which contact with the mucous membrane. We already know the example includes endoscope, respiratory equipment, okay, incubation. Then there are also urinary bottles, etc., which we have to enter to our, in the urethra, okay. Respiratory equipment, urine bottles, etc., and these requires high level disinfectant, okay. Not sterilization, but these requ devices require high level disinfection. Then there is non critical devices which contact with the intact skin, like our stethoscope, uh, uh, our sigma manometers, okay, BPR apparatus. Okay, so such examples are non critical devices which contact with the intact skin. Examples include stethoscope, sorry. Our BP apparatus. So this requires only whether intermittent level of disinfections or low level disinfections. Okay, because they are not that much critical in using as a medical equipment. But the critical devices require sterilization. Semi-critical devices require high level disinfections, and non-critical devices requires intermittent or low level disinfection. So that's all about the sterilization and disinfection it was a little bit of lengthy chapter but i hope you understand because it is important so let us wind up see you next video